Hello and welcome. Today I want to teach you how to create a cute little shop or store. So let's dive in. We have a cube. We're not going to delete it. We're going to start off with it. So in front view, numpad 1 um, or numpad 3, both will work. Press G, Z and 1. Right, that's going to place our cube beautifully to the world origin. Press tab to go to edit mode, select our top face and press G and Z and just move that down to what you would feel like would be the dimensions of your store, something like that. Now, I'm gonna press Shift D, Escape P selection. There we go, press tap and select our new objects. Press tap A and E, extrude that up. There we go, and add a loop cut, scroll up once. Loop cut is Control R, by the way. Scroll up once, so you get two. Left click to apply and escape to just go out of that, right? And this is gonna come in handy, um, so press three and press a double click or alt click, depending on your preferences, just try both um, to select the entire face loop, the edge loops, and press E, escape, and alt S, and that's gonna scale according to your normals. There you go. Now I'm gonna select my top, I'm gonna press I to inset, there we go, and press E to extrude that down, something like that, beautiful. Then I'm gonna select this edge, shift D, escape, selection, press tap, select that new edge, press tap again to go into edit mode, press A and extrude this into the X direction, right? So lock it by pressing X, there we go, beautiful. Then select your face and press E and extrude this up just like that, beautiful, right? And you can toggle between vertex, edge and face select by pressing 1, 2 and 3 on your keyboard, right? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then I'm just going to bevel this side edge, for example, Control B, just crank that up like that, and you will get a bevel menu on the bottom left. Just unfold that and set your segments to be about 16. And then let's set our profile top to be custom. And let's set this to be a preset of crown molding. Right, interesting, right? It's just to create a beautiful little shape. For the other edge, I'm going to press the same edge, right? Edge select is two on your keyboard, control B, and just bevel that. I'm gonna do approximately the same, right? We could have also selected the same edge uh, at the same time, right, to do this in one go, but we can now just change this to be, for example, um, a corner's morning, whatever that may be, right? So just to create some little um, asymmetrical shapes, right? That's always a fun thing to do, beautiful. And what we can do then is I want a little side shapes, right? I want some some things, some, what are they called? They're not curtains, but things on the side that fold out pretty much. So I'm gonna press tab, select this top edge, shift D, escape P selection. Press tab again, select our new object. Inside view, press A and E. There we go, and E and Z. We can extrude that down beautifully, right there. And then we can select our edge there, press Control B. Now I don't want this to be a crown molding or any type of molding, I just want this to be a super ellipse. So there we go, select that. Beautiful. All right, then to fill that up on the sides, we can just press two, double click that entire edge. And actually we first need to add an extra vertex. So select our top vertex there. And let's enable snapping, right? The little magnet icon on top and set that from increment to vertex. Press EZ and then just connect it to that Z vertex there. And then we can press two, double click the edge and double click this edge or just click it and press F. We're filling up the face. And then for this side, we can do the same EZ, hover over that vertex, press two, select the edge. And there we go, F. Right mouse should move by angle, beautiful. Right, then we want a window and a door. So in edit mode of our cube, I'm gonna press tab and I'm gonna add an edge loop right through the middle, left clip, clip, left click and drag that a bit to the right like this, right? Because this is the part for the door and this is gonna be the part for the window. So for the window, press I to inset that just like that and press two and move that bottom edge a bit up like this, beautiful. Then we can just extrude this inwards just a tiny little bit, there we go. Now for the door, we're going to take a little bit of a different approach, but not really, right? We just wanna inset this and scale this down in the Y direction just slightly to get the door dimensions. There we go. And then I just want to subdivide this, right? Just like that. Beautiful. 
right? So now we can actually just select this edge loop, press GZ, move this down a little bit like that. And then we can press this and this face and press I to inset that a little bit like that. And do the same thing for the top, inset that just a tiny bit like that. And then select all those faces we just inserted and press E to extrude that inwards just a little bit like so. Beautiful. And then everything else here and here, we can actually extrude that outwards a little bit to create some layering there in our door, right? So that will be our door frame. Amazing. So let's add a little bit of side windows here. And so this is the back. I'm not going to worry too much about that because usually that will be against like a wall or well, perhaps if it's like a standalone thing, boom, but I'm not going to worry about that for too much. Then for these two, I'm going to press I to insert that like that, S, Z, and move that up a little bit with GZ. Let's subdivide this and press I to insert and I again to insert individually. And then press E, S, Y to scale that inwards a little bit, just like that. Right, windows, beautiful. So the last thing I want to do is add a little sign that says like coffee shop or something like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to press shift, right click to set my 3D cursor on that little top little um, sign there and press control numpad three to go into that font view, I guess it depends, numpad three or control numpad three, shift A and add some text. And press RZ minus 90 and RY 90. No, backspace minus 90. There we go. It's always a little bit difficult. There we go. So just move this to the front of your face. Disable snapping, of course. There we go. G, S will scale. Stuff like that. Beautiful. And let's name this the coffee corner, right? Something like that. Scale this down a little bit. Beautiful. And then we can actually go to our data of our fonts and we can actually set this to be a different font as well if you'd like that, right? So just change your regular to be whatever you'd like. It will take you to your Windows fonts. You can't really see this, so I'll make sure to hurry this up a little bit. Let's say I want this to be our Bauhaus font, right? Coffee corner, beautiful, just like that. And then we can actually set some geometry here and we can make this extrude a little bit, right? It's going to extrude in both sides. So remember that. And then we can also add a little bit of a roundness depth, right? And it's going to smoothen this out a little bit, just like that. All right, let's press G and X and just move that slightly through the front there. Beautiful. So now we got a coffee corner with a little sign, right? So let's just create some materials right now. And so we can also show how to do that. Right, so let's press Shift A Mesh and Plane first. And let's move that to our world origin by pressing Shift S Cursor to World Origin and a Shift S selection to cursor and just scale this up a little bit. Right. So that's gonna be the ground for our coffee corner. Beautiful. Now let's go into our render viewport shading. There we go. So this is basically the EV shading, I guess. And let's just add some materials for our coffee corner. Right, so let's say I want this side to be, I want to choose like soft pastel colors, I guess. So let's hit material. I'm going to hit new just because everything has probably got the same material yet. So I'm going to hit new. I'm going to name this my cube, right? Because it's basically a cube. So base color, I'm going to set this to be a nice soft color or something like that, right? We want this to be cute not dark or whatever. So that's beautiful. And then for our windows, we can select all our planes. These are all windows, the door as well, right? These are windows, this one as well. And then we can hit plus and then hit new and hit assign, right? So that is now a new material. We can name this to be windows, right? For the windows, I'm just gonna keep this nice and easy, add a little bit of a blue, blue tint to it that's usually what is reflected in windows the environment and just turns out that the sky is often a bluish color right and then we could just set the roughness to be a little bit lower perhaps right so this is not really a representation that i would go with so let's go to our world properties and change the color to be like a sky texture i guess there we go and let's just go to rendered view to see how that looks all right, so that's a little bit better, not completely beautiful yet. So let's go to our rendered view, film, I set that to be transparent, so we don't see the background. 
And then for the sun, we can actually just rotate this a little bit, right? Sun rotation, find a nice rotation for our sun disk. Press something like that. And then we can also go and we could change the strength or intensity here, but usually that's not how you will do it with cameras or video cameras in real life because it will actually just change the, this, the exposure. And that is done in the render tab at the bottom at color management. And then you can actually crank down your exposure a little bit like that. All right, beautiful. And then you can still change your rotation, right? To find a nice, nice rotation spot. So let's go with something. I want both corners to be a little bit lit, but not fully, something like that. I suppose. Oh, let's make our front nicely lit and our side a little bit less. There we go. Now I'm also going to delete this light point. I don't want that anymore. Something like that. Beautiful. Now the ground, I'm going to shade as well. So create a new material and name this ground. And let's make this a color of, um, I'm going to choose a similar color to our building because usually it matches quite well. Something like that. And let's just create a lower roughness like that. And I'm actually going to change my render engine to cycles and set my GPU. And the reason why is because I am a fan of cycles, guys. It is just how it is. I'm sorry about it, but not really. So let's change our ground to be um, slightly different. Hmm. It's always a bit tricky to choose a color, but I want a nice reflection in my ground. Something like... That wraps a little bit bluish. And then for my front piece there, um, I'm actually going to uh, add a new material and rename this primary. And I'm going to select edit mode and hit Ctrl R, scroll up a few times to add some edge loops right there. And then select every other loop that we just made. There we go, there we go, there we go. It's plus and hit new and hit assign and rename this to secondary, right? So now if we change our primary color to be, for example, um, what will be a cool color like red, a little bit darker red, there we go, and select our secondary and set this to be, well, white will do, I guess, looks quite nice. Then we have two colors for this front piece. Isn't that beautiful, right? So I'm going to change my windows to be just a little bit more bluish, I guess, something like that quite nice and roughness can be lower beautiful now we could even add a little bit of transparency by cranking down that alpha right could look like fun and um, downside will be that it's actually well we don't really have anything on the inside right so we can also change this to be glass see how that looks now then of course we are going to see the full inside so let's just stick to uh, let's just stick to this right a little bit of the inside but not all of it now for this top sign i'm gonna hit a new material sign make this something like a brownish color i guess a little bit woodish would be cool i suppose um it's always tricky to find the wood color that doesn't look like garbage right something like this perhaps a little bit lighter a little bit more desaturated something that looks a little bit like coffee perhaps i forgot the color of coffee something like this perhaps i don't know it looks cool and then for our sign, we could keep this at white, but it's not really readable. So let's make this the same color as red we have here. So primary, right? So perhaps that could match quite nicely. Let's try it out. Um, nope, that does not match quite nicely. So let's keep it as white, right? <laughs> quite nice. Um, for this top piece, I'm going to set this to be a new material as well. Top and rename or change the color to be the same level of brown and we can even color pick our top sign right so that means we're in the same kind of range of colors i guess and then we can just change this to be a little bit darker perhaps could look cool yeah there we go and then in edit mode you want to select this inner edge loop by double clicking or alt clicking it's plus new assign rename this to inner i guess and we want this to be um, let's say we could even go with the same color we have here so cube color so let's change this to be cube. There we go. Quite beautiful. Now I'm not happy with this color yet. So I'm gonna change this a little bit to be darker and more into the orange tints. There we go. I think that looks quite dope. 
So that was part one of creating the little coffee corner. We got the shape set up, right? The, the initial foundation. And then the next part, we're gonna just make the materials a bit better, refine it a little bit, and also make sure that we set it up correctly for rendering, all right? So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.